SMEs SMEs are the backbone of the Philippine economy. Union Bank has laid down the groundwork for creating an ecosystem helping businesses through an integrated user experience connecting key stakeholders in the ecosystem. SMEs can now have immediate access to financial service providers, points of sale or POS, accounting, inventory, human resources, tax and payroll services, supply chain management, and providing business communities and engagement in B2B and B2C marketplaces. In building that ecosystem, Union Bank Global Linker was born. It's an online platform with social networking capabilities that help SMEs manage and grow their businesses. On their first year of launch, they already have 33,000 SMEs signed up in the platform. Their promise? To become a one-stop hub for business owners. Four pillars. Network with potential partners and suppliers from a global network of SMEs. Engage with thought leaders and create your own topics for discussion. Avail exclusive deals and offers from business solutions that will help aid an SME's business. Create a DIY e-commerce shop. Linker.store I think one major role that Global Linker plays is its ability to create a digital platform that for business growth. It's a huge help because it provides for an app view where businesses can interact, learn, and at the same time expand their networks. But as a social media platform, Global Linker helps build the community of SMEs and link them to the right market, suppliers, financiers, and advisors. I've actually established a contact in Philippines who is interested in my product, and we are working on ways how we can do that. So hopefully, you know, it, it, it materializes. The future of the SME sector in the Philippines is endless. With fintech, business growth can accelerate by breaking down barriers, setting up important connections, and moving daily activities. Success is definite. It's just waiting to happen. The growth of SME filters to all levels of the Philippine society. This sector employs more than 60% of Filipinos. So many lives will be transformed with the success of SMEs. Union Bank Global Linker will be there to make it happen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bounce Back 2021 Time to Shine Practical Coaching Series. My name is Kara, and I will be here with you tonight for Episode 7 of um, the series. I My topic for tonight is your business and show business, primarily dealing with navigating through the entertainment and lifestyle landscape of PR. So before I start my presentation, we'd like to thank Union Bank, Global Linker, and Reseller are corporate partners. Okay. Um, there you go. I can now see my screen, which means I can't see anyone. But okay. Um, hello again. So this is my presentation. Hopefully, after tonight, you would have a better idea on how to do your own PR efforts or start your own communication plans. So this is my big introductory uh, introductory slide. My name is Kara. I am from Media.Exchange PR. We're a communications firm that specializes in entertainment and brands in Southeast Asia. So I'm the managing director and the photos i've shown here or i've put here are some of the work that we've done 
Um, I'm also a writer, so I have bylines in ABS-CBN and the Philippine Star, as well as a consultant for international development organizations. Pretty much to sum up, um, communication is part and parcel of what I do, and I've helped some um, NGOs or volunteer, volunteer groups as well um, improve their communication services. So the poster that you've seen all over for this series that was made by someone from our team. Um, thank you for that. And thank you, Bounce Back, for adapting that design. And for today, um, I'd like to give you a quick introduction on what PR is, in case you still don't know. So PR means facilitating ongoing conversation in an always online world or an always on world. Um, there's a stark difference between advertising and PR. With advertising, um, simply put, means buying a space for you to promote your products or your messaging or whatever, versus PR, which deals with relationships, um, pitching, and at the moment, um, getting social media to be in your brand's favor. So traditionally, PR is about how organizations communicate with the public, promote themselves, and build a positive reputation and public image. Um, the role of public relations has shifted right now because of the synergies of media, social media, and all the avenues that we have at the moment. And instead of creating content ourselves to put out, um, our jobs right now is to influence the content that's being created by others. As you've seen in the pandemic, um, how brands appear to the world during that time or during this difficult time also affects how people would see them for years. So there have been a lot of apologetic brands who were insensitive with their messaging. Um, there were CEOs who were fired because of certain um, certain actions and that's what PR does. It helps shape your narrative to the public eye. It's not moving. <laughs> okay. Um, I've attached some examples um, of successful PR efforts that I think um, you should also note in case you were looking at doing your own campaigns. So at the top is the Forbes 30 under 30 list. It's a list that people who are trying to further their careers or their businesses and who are under 30 or are still in the youth category are joining. It's a big um, accomplishment to be part of the list. But um, as we as time goes by, this list, instead of being like a coveted list, it has become a PR machine for people, especially those in the tech start tech and startup worlds to join um, just so they have better branding and a better grasp at their own imaging. Um, then I was trying to think of a celebrity who I feel has the best PR. And there are a lot. There are a lot of them who are able to use their platforms well um, and smartly. But I picked Angelina Jolie just because she has an elusive side to her. So everything that she puts out, because she's so scarce in her um, promotion of herself, like she doesn't have social media, you can only reach her via official interviews or like a Vogue cover like this. Um, it's her elusiveness that makes you want more of her. So supply demand pretty much. And because a lot of the times, um, celebrities right now are also oversaturated. You can pretty much see them everything down to live streaming their days. Um, it's just refreshing when people like Angelina gets to control her narrative because of the information that she chooses to put out whether it's a cover or an essay about a particular world topic or keeping her divorce with Brad under wraps. Um, 
over here is an influencer photo. So it seems like a harmless influencer photo. But this was the Saudi Arabia's PR attempt to clean up their image, especially in 2019 when they were mired with a lot of scandals, including a killing of a journalist. Um, what they tried to do was to invite influencers and you know promote tourism in hopes that it would erase or just um, rehabilitate their image. Unfortunately, it backlashed both on Saudi Arabia and the influencers because at the age of social media, we now have receipts. And last but not the least, we have Elon Musk, the world's richest man. Um, pretty much, if you're the richest man, everything you do is, uh, is going to get picked up by the media. But just recently, he joined a room on Clubhouse. Clubhouse is a social audio app. And he hosted the room, he joined the room, and he called um, the CEO of Robinhood, which, is, which was in hot water over the last few days because of the GME trade. So he called the CEO on stage and then directly point blank asked him, is there anything shady going on? And you could see like the media picked it up almost immediately. Twitter was on fire thus making his appearance on Clubhouse like a really good PR stunt, PR effort for Robin Hood and also for the investor of Robin Hood, who is also coincidentally the in investor of Clubhouse staff. So if you're a small, a small brand, you're not Tesla, you're not Amazon, should you still invest your time and your effort in PR? The short answer is yes. Um, and I've come up with 10 tips to help you with your PR campaigns and efforts because no matter how small, it's still an attempt and it still would help you um, further your brand and amplify your message. So for the top 10 tips, at the top is utilizing your social media um, and using it to your advantage. I think pretty much if you have a Facebook page um, for your brand, if you're active on social media, and if you participate in um, networks such as Bounce Back, you would already know how to go about social media. But um, some practical tips as well, especially if you are in the product space and would want to reach out to influencers to um, have them promote your brand is to send high quality samples. You would want to put your best foot forward in sending PR kits. Although you also have to manage your expectation that it's not every time they will use um, your post or they would post about it. If they're gracious, they would say thank you. Um, if they're not, it will just be received or marked received. But in any case and in any effort that you plan to do, make sure that um, your presentation is top notch. It's ready for posting, it looks good. And personalization works. So do your research on which influencer would be able to help you with your promotions just because one, they're avid fans of it, or two, um, they really use your product. So you can't send a steak product, for example, to someone who's vegan. So you have to do background research, tap your influencers. If you have more money, um, engage them in a paid partnership. So these are the things that could go on with social media marketing. Of course, you would already know the diff other different types, such as paid ads, um, branded content. And if your own internal social media account is, um, you know, distinct, is unique, has its own story, organically, you get picked up by the media. So I think it was during the start of the pandemic when Lego was putting out ads um, that were timely and were relevant and had a witty punchline that were just, um, um, that were a slight jab to what was happening politically. And people picked it up because it was funny. It used their brand style and at the same time it felt very legal to do so um in short it wasn't a plain campaign it had balls it had cuts and that's why instead of um legal promoting themselves too hard it was the media going up to legal and saying hey can we interview you or can we feature you because we really think that what you're doing is creating a big buzz 
Next on my tips is to share stories with flair. And when we mean flair, we mean um, eye-catching things because at the age of oversaturation, there's really an overdose of information around. And frankly, I can't keep up with everything that's happening. So I, I, ha I have personally put myself on an information diet wherein I only see or read or consume things that add value to my life or to my work. Um, for this project, I cited my own project. We wanted to put out the message on mental health and to be able to do so, uh, and we were reaching people who were in universities because according to a study of the Department of Health, um, it's kids age 16 to 25 who are also hard hit with depression, um, although some of them don't know how to go about it, like what's the process, um, where should they go, who should they talk to. So in order to raise awareness for that, we made a campus tour, um, got bands to perform and who also wanted to share their own bouts with um, battling depression or their own mental health um, care stories. And it was done, it, it was executed through a concert, which unfortunately due to the pandemic, we can't do right now. But you would have to think of other creative executions to go above and beyond in sharing your message to others. So you're not just limited by social media. There are also on-ground events you could use. Right now you have online events. Um, and well, sky's the limit, really. Um, number eight, collaborate with dreamers and doers like yourself. So I, again, I'd like to thank Bounce Back for having me here. Um, we worked with them a while back for Project Go, which was a reality show on AXN in partnership with GoDaddy. We were doing a business reality show where we had to look for startups or really promising um, entrepreneurs to fund because the prize money was one million. And when we were discussing our team, when our team was discussing um, who would be the best partner, Bounce Back came up because we knew that it was a network of like-minded individuals who were trying to just get by and support each other in times of the pandemic. And with our partnership with Bounce Back, it was so easy. Um, I met with Jason um, and then the next day we were already putting the logos on our collateral. So in any relationship, whether romantic, platonic or professional, it should feel easy. And those that work best are those that are you know, without much struggles um, because you're both looking towards the same direction and you both want the same things. So find a good partner that would make your work easier for you and would help you propel your brand further. Um, number seven, you have to find your voice, simplify your message and stick with it. Again, with everything going on with the with tons of compet um, competitors that you have and so many things happening, it's hard to get your message across, especially if you feel like you're such a small voice or you're such a small brand. Um, but if you find a message that's distinctly yours and that encapsulates your, your entire brand, stick with it, run with it. Um, because it takes time as well for people to pick up on on things like, you know, when you put out a campaign, it's not automatically going to give you rewards. So good things take time, but just be wary not to take a lot of time because it also means that it's not effective if that's the case. Um, the example here is my work with um, the UK government when we were promoting um, Britain, the entire of Britain for being a leader in pretty much everything, education, business, culture, entertainment. And they had a very, very simple yet effective tagline, which was, this is Great Britain. So it was a play on Great Britain, their name. But also when you say that something is great, it means like, oh, there are so many things that people could enjoy, people um, could look forward to. And it was a very effective campaign because we got all of these brands who wanted to take part in it. Um, at the end of the four-year run that we had. So we started, of course, we were struggling. We were a small group. Um, no one 
quite believed in the product, but because we were able to prove that it was a worthwhile project, um, people started looking forward to e to it um, year by year. Unfortunately, um, I think they stopped their marketing campaign because of Brexit. So there, find your own message, keep it simple, and make sure that there's a recall um, in your own lines. Um, number six, know how to connect with your audience. So by this time, you would already know what type of market you have. Um, what you want to do is to reach out to them and create or cultivate those relationships with your audience to make sure that they're not just a one-time customer, they will be repeat customers. Um, in our case, we do constant media conferences with our media friends um, because we want to take care of that relationship. And we do so by constantly inviting them to um, online events, allowing them to meet the celebrities we work with, inviting CEOs from abroad of the companies or brands that we represent so that they get to meet them and ask them questions. So you have to find opportunities for the people you work with um, or you collaborate with to also, you know, get value out of their relationship with you because it can't be just, oh, please use this for your PR campaign or please um, promote my product without you giving them a product. So, of course, it's uh, give and take as well. And then number five, be experts in your field and share your knowledge to others. Um, with this, what I'm trying to say is that you have to, um, I mean, we're all jack of all trades or Jane of all trades uh, at this time because we have to be adept in all of the skills and not just one to be able to survive, much more so survive a pandemic. But if you are an expert in your field, people could see the quality of the advice that you give versus the quantity. And people look up to you more knowing that, um, you know, the, the knowledge that you have and the inputs that you have would help them in that particular scenario. So um, an example for this is um, when you see CEOs or, you know, startup funders online or on TV doing an interview, usually and almost usually, there's a PR team that works behind the scenes to make sure that what they say is on brand, they're on message, and at the same time, um, they're able to represent the country well because they are running the country, uh, they're, they're running their own companies, um, but sometimes not all of the leaders are also great communicators. So when you see interviews that are well done or you feel inspired after seeing a CEO on TV, one, they must have the innate talent to communicate, but at the same time, you know that there's a PR team working very hard to make sure that the message and the right message gets sent across. Whoops. Um, number four, um, the advice is to build lasting relationships. Again, when you pitch your stories to influencers, to media, um, you don't do it, like you don't meet them and then pitch immediately without having prior relationships with them because chances are they might not notice you. So what you want to do is to um, build relationships before, network with them, go to groups that would help you meet them or find common connections, just so when you ask them to for help to feature your product or you ask them to help you promote your product, um, it's not going to appear like, oh, he's only talking to me because he needs something from me. So you want to also be their resource person should the time come that they would need help with their own stuff or with their own stories. Those are just some, some examples of um, great partnerships formed and how it has significantly made events and PR campaigns easier because of the network that we have. Um, we're down to the last three tips. So 
right here we have expand creative experiences um just because you have a product doesn't mean you're stuck with that product and you can't explore other ways to go um above and beyond marketing it um pr and marketing go hand in hand so there's always going to be the visual appeal um there's always going to be the fun appeal but at the same time, there would be instances, and these are my favorite executions, when you put something that has not been done before, or you try to um, reimagine what it would look like. So on the right, we promoted a Broadway play. Oh, sorry, not a Broadway play, a musical play um, on the Wish Bus, which often was um, is just used by singers or um music personalities who are promoting their latest singles or albums but what we did was to promote a musical show on it which was fun to do but at the same time it hasn't been done before so what you want to do when you try to make your co communication campaigns is to create things that would shake up the usual way of doing of going about things um just so especially if there's not much to lose um because that would help you capture like a more excited audience because they've seen you go outside of your comfort zone in terms of selling um and then we have cement your global presence so online it's such a big big opportunity like there's so much opportunity online um for you to be able to leverage your assets your skills and then raise it to a much higher platform granted that you could get the attention of someone in singapore or try to um make your product accessible to possibly exporters or distributors abroad um, you have to work on that because ultimately, like the world is very, very small. Um, it's something that I've come to realize. And I hope you do too, that as the world gets more connected online, it becomes much, much smaller, meaning um, everything is possible. All executions, such as the smart B BTS collaboration is possible. Um, or having Justin Bieber come here for a Yolanda mission um, or a K-pop um, rookie group gracing Manila stage. Like right now, um, you're only limited by your imagination. So, and if you're going to dream big, might as well reach for the highest of the high um, and go for like the major stars. <laughs> um, and then last but not the least, um, understand what you stand for. So ultimately, the best way to influence your audience is by having a great product and being truthful to your brand story. As part of our work, we do pro bono work um, and we work with kids with cancer, kids with rare diseases or mental health issues because those are advocacies we personally believe in. And I hope that in the work that you do, you also find time to dedicate like a segment of your work um, or your time and effort to things that matter to you personally. Um, because at the end of the day, you'd only be successful if you are remaining true to what you believe in, um, if your values are also seen in the work that you do, and if you're truthful to the very core of what you stand for. Um, so that concludes my presentation. For those that joined us quite late, I have a short video just recapping the points that I made earlier. Um, Sam, could you hear my audio? Sorry, I have to talk to Sam. <laughs> Sam, could you hear my audio or no? Okay, I'm just going to assume that you can hear my audio.
And with that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you, everyone. Um, you could reach me at this email if you have questions. Or, oh, okay, there are questions. Um, so the first question is, how much percentage of our budget should be allocated for PR? Usually, marketing budgets um, comprise of like the 10% of your profit. So with PR, I would recommend about 30% um, percent for that, especially if you're going to do um, like other ad channels like OOH, billboards, um, commercials. But if you are a smaller brand who are and you won't be finding a use for um the billboards etc you could um you could say put like a little bit more 50 percent um because pr um has a like for a lower amount you get wider reach for it are influencers open to exchange deals um Yes and no. So the nano influencers, you're looking at micro and nano influencers, um, you would have better chances with them. If you're looking at the macro ones or those with 1 million and above, usually the, it would entail um, a cash component as well. How do you evaluate? If, um, so question number three, how do you evaluate influencers or do do diligence when selecting them? Um, we go for brand fit really because right now you could easily um get followers or it doesn't always follow that people with high following or high numbers get be the best engagement so if you look at what's happening with um the k-pop fan groups uh the hollywood stars would have a higher following um in terms of you know follower count but the engagement comes with um, the K-pop groups in that network because it's a very energized, engaged base. So I would say that if you were to choose or if you were to select which influencers to work with, one, make sure that they use their pro your product because that would make selling your product much easier. Um, and they would be more open and more excited to work with you if it's something that they really use. Um, and then second, also check their content because you wouldn't want a haphazard execution for your campaign. So you wouldn't, if you're promoting a TV show, you wouldn't want someone holding up a screen and saying, oh, okay, this is my post. You want a creator that really creates and really pushes the boundaries. I mean, given your brand guidelines, of course, but really makes sure that um, your brand gets the content it deserves um categorize nano and micro so nano and micro are niche influencers usually you would see them as oh um someone who just posts about cars um and the nano and micro pertains to their follower count so 5 10 15 000 followers um next question sorry i if i'm talking too fast also please <laughs> let me know um, how many social media platforms should my brand focus on and what do you recommend? Uh, it would depend on which, um, which social media platform captures your audience. If you're gunning for a more Gen Z one, um, TikTok is the number one platform to use right now for products or for lead generation. It's been proven and the Philippines ranks um, number two in terms of user base for TikTok. Um, but if you are you have something that people of the more mature set use, then probably stick to Facebook because they're all there or Viber because the Viber or the group communities are actually quite strong. Um, there, like each social media platform cater to a particular audience where you feel your um, strength is at, harness that um, and grow that market. But 
seriously, I really recommend TikTok. Um, and not placing ads on TikTok, like creating tic, um, TikTok content as well because of the engagement. It's insane. The numbers are insane. How do you build relationships with news outlets such as ABS, CBN, CNN, etc.? Um, it comes with networks. So before there were opportunities to meet them, like either through movie screenings or an event that you were both invited to. But right now, since it's quite um, difficult to do that, you could try reaching out to the writers. Um, you would see their byline. So check their bylines, look for them on Twitter. Um, the writers or the journalists are quite active on Twitter. That's their platform. You could try to find them on Facebook, but I would not recommend it because you have to maintain a certain level of professionalism as well in trying to reach them. So ask for their email, write them a letter, and then you could um, do your pitch via that. Career direction question. How do I become someone like you and offer PR and social media services? Um, well, the first thing in anything really is that you've got to start somewhere. If you have good content right now, um, you could try promoting that. Um, work on your content if online um, because it moves things quite quicker than if you do it the traditional route. Um, there are certain universities that are offering like PR as a degree. But if you're just in the field of like, a, if you wanted a more generic field, like a communications um, degree, that's something that you could also um, look into. And you could, and if you wanted like a head start, um, check out your PR agencies. Um, there are different PR agencies around. You could ask them for internships. Um, and see if there are opportunities for you to do so. If you're doing a career shift, um, well, just apply. There's really not, not much to lose. Um, I know for a fact that we're always open for interns. So if you're a college student looking to put in more hours, um, you have my email down there at the ticker. You can reach me. Um, you are also a writer. How did you get to write for ABS-CBN? Um, so I've... I started writing when I was in third grade. I worked from, worked, but I volunteered for um, the kids section of the Philippine Daily Inquirer. Then in college, they opened um, this program for campus journalists. So, no, sorry. I, I did kids for Inquirer um, bulletin, and then they did a campus thing for Inquirer. Um, Basically, what I did was I just applied. I looked for opportunities. I applied. I was proactive in um, in checking if people were um, were opening such opportunities. Right now, you could do um, you could send in your article and pitch them to like the likes of Rappler. Um, that helps you build your own byline and your own portfolio online. So. Inquirer does it with Young Blood. You could submit essays. Rappler also has um, a platform where you could just submit your your work um, and just try and continue writing. We also have youth. Okay, next question. We have youth entrepreneurs. What is your advice to aspiring entrepreneurs? Um. Find someone that you would look up to in terms of career trajectory, in terms of, um, you know, that person you pin on your dream board, if people still do that, your vision board, because you would want to see that, um, I mean, you would want to get inspiration and you would want to need, um, you would need constant um a constant reminder that it's possible to achieve something big. So if you're a youth entrepreneur, um, work at it, do your own content, really. Um, it's going to be a creator economy. It's right, I mean, right now we 
barely scratched the surface in terms of the create, uh, creator economy. And it's only bound to get big in the next few years. Um, hmm. So who are your, <laughs> slum book question, um, who are your role models and people you look up to? I, I do follow, um, so I like to read and I, I, I look up to authors because I feel that they're able to articulate what they feel um, at any given point. So the ones that I, I like um, recently are Patti Smith, Susan Sontag, and also a bunch of political writers. But in terms of uh, like a, I don't want to say girl boss, but like just someone I look up to. Um, hmm. Probably, like, I'm not going to go far, but I, I look up to my mom who started the business prior, like, way before me, because she also helped me pave the path and has made, you know, connecting with people much easier. So, there. But, yes, always good to have role models <laughs> and people you should not idolize, but, you know, should feel inspired by. Um, next question. I'm an aspiring content creator focusing on video creation. Besides YouTube, what other platforms can I go for? Uh, definitely TikTok because consumer attention span is getting shorter and shorter these days. Um, and also you could see how creative the young people are with TikTok because of the edits and, you know, all the talent. And it's really like not a lot of people use it for vanity so the ones that really use it to showcase their talents they're amazing um but also like in any platform whether it's telegram even twitter where you could um natively post your content directly on their platform you should try to boost it and get as much exposure um wherever you can Next question, is it okay to communicate in Taglish, mis mixed language in my content? Definitely, especially if your followers understand you better um, when you speak in Taglish. So the thing is you have to speak where, um, you have to speak the language your audience speaks and whatever it is, just go for it. Okay. Um, Again, thank you for all the questions. We don't have time, um, but I hope that my short presentation helps you or you know, can help you with jumpstarting your PR campaigns or your communication plans for your brand. Um, for further questions, you can reach me through my email. You can see it in the ticker below. And we'd like to thank again Union Global Linker, Union Bank Global Linker and Reselli as much as well as Bounce Back Philippines for having me today for episode seven of the practical coaching sessions. So thanks everyone and hope you have a lovely evening. Oh, we have a, sorry, before that, um, there's also another episode, episode eight happening at 8 p.m. So have a quick dinner and then come back to see Rock Cleo who will talk about innovation and creativity. Um, mix PR and innovation and creativity and hopefully you get like a really really good broad campaign again thank you everyone and have a great evening SMEs are the backbone of the Philippine economy Union Bank has laid down the groundwork for creating an ecosystem helping businesses through an integrated user experience connecting key stakeholders in the ecosystem SMEs can now have immediate access to financial service providers, points of sale or POS, accounting, inventory, human resources, tax and payroll services, supply chain management, and providing business communities and engagement in B2B and B2C marketplaces. In building that ecosystem, Union Bank Global Linker was born. It's an online platform with social networking capabilities that help SMEs manage and grow their businesses. 
On their first year of launch, they already have 33,000 SMEs signed up in the platform. Their promise? To become a one-stop hub for business owners. Four pillars. Network with potential partners and suppliers from a global network of SMEs. Engage with thought leaders and create your own topics for discussion. Avail exclusive deals and offers from business solutions that will help aid an SME's business. Create a DIY e-commerce shop. Blinkered.store. I think one major role that Global Linker plays is its ability to create a digital platform that for business growth. It's a huge help because it provides for an happy view where businesses can interact, learn, and at the same time expand their networks. But as a social media platform, Global Linker helps build the community of SMEs and link them to the right markets, suppliers, financiers, and advisors. I've actually established a contact in Philippines who is interested in my product and we are working on ways how we can do that. So hopefully, you know, it, it, it materializes. The future of the SME sector in the Philippines is endless. With FinTech, business growth can accelerate by breaking down barriers setting up important connections and moving daily activities. Success is definite. It's just waiting to happen. The growth of SME filters to all levels of the Philippine society. This sector employs more than 60% of Filipinos. So many lives will be transformed with the success of SMEs. Union Bank Global Linker will be there to make it happen.